What is going on everybody? Paul here coming at you with a crypto coffee update. Just a segment where we take some time to go over some news, events, and conferences happening in the wide and ever-growing world of crypto. But I do need one thing from you, dear listener. Join me for a simultaneous sip where we kick off the day right sipping coffee together. Ah, starting the day right in solidarity. All right, let's go ahead and get into the news. China's continuing its crackdown. No hotels, malls, offices, etc. to be used as crypto venues. Very interesting continuation of the intense crackdown against cryptocurrencies, not specifically blockchain, that we see coming out of China. Let's go ahead and explore and expand on what's going on in the Middle Kingdom. It appears the government of China has been pressing forward on its campaign to make it nearly impossible for the average Chinese citizen to use cryptocurrency. As said, there's a bit more amicable positioning towards actual blockchain technology, however existing cryptocurrencies don't really mesh well with the authoritarian nature of the Chinese state. In fact, not only can Chinese citizens no longer use venues that they're familiar with to meet up and talk about cryptocurrencies and have conferences, but earlier this week the government moved against crypto news sites censoring such large outlets like Huobi. WeChat, the very popular Chinese social media application, was also ordered to remove these news sites, taking a lot of information out of the hands of the average Chinese citizen. It'll be interesting to see how China attempts to square the circle of maintaining authoritarian hegemony over its populace as a state and allowing for technological innovation to grow naturally out of its market economy. One thing's for sure, that'll take a lot of energy, and that's something that Bitcoin uses a lot of. However, according to a researcher recently, banks consume over three times more energy than Bitcoin, something that kind of turns the recent meme on its head. Let's unpack and explore what's going on there. A researcher named Kelly Pateau said that experts are failing to understand some of the basics behind renewable energy systems. She says electricity production can increase while still maintaining a minimal impact on the environment. Rather than focusing on how much energy Bitcoin uses, the discussion should center around who indeed is producing it and where this power is coming from. That's a very important distinction considering getting energy from coal is very different from getting energy from something like, say, a solar panel. And a startling figure, she notes that banking alone consumes an estimated 100 terawatts, or three times more energy than Bitcoin currently consumes. In the article itself, the researcher also mentions that if Bitcoin were to increase its hash power by, say, a hundredfold, that would still only account for 2% of the global energy consumption. So while that sounds like a large amount, comparative to the rest of human activity, it's not too much. So check out the article for more interesting comparisons about the current Bitcoin energy consumption and other industries. And this individual isn't alone. Kelly Pateau's sentiment was echoed by an individual named Jonathan Kumi. For two decades, people have been eager to overestimate electricity use by computing. My concern is that we simply don't have adequate data to come to the strong conclusion that he's coming to. He being the individuals asserting that Bitcoin is going to suck up all the energy in the world. Luckily, that seems a far way off. Changing gears, a update on Ripple, the plaintiff has withdrawn their class action lawsuit. This is the individual Ryan Coffey, who originally sued Ripple Labs and XRP, saying that they are issuing tokens after the crowd sale and before distribution had even began, they were issuing XRP tokens to early investors, something that amounts to essentially a never-ending ICO. However, Ryan Coffey has walked back his statements after also admitting to losing an embarrassing amount of capital while trading Ripple, so now he's kind of revealed to the world what a poor trader he is, but nonetheless, having read the papers filed by the parties and carefully considered their arguments and the relevant legal authority and good cause appearing, the court hereby denies the plaintiff's motion. So, with that out of the way, it seems as though Ripple is in the clear for the time being. Here is the formal legal notice that was put out. However, some individuals were unhappy about this. They said that a court ruling would offer some legal insight as to how the government views Ripple and that would offer some beneficial precedent for the company going forward. Let me know what you guys think below in the comments about Ripple. Do you think a lawsuit could have brought some clarity to the situation or is it better to just leave this sort of thing by the wayside considering that, well, he voluntarily dismissed it himself? Speaking of government intervention into crypto, the SEC has rejected multiple Bitcoin ETFs, up to eight of them in one day. 
However, not all is as it may appear. Two rejections were from applications filed by a company called ProShares that would have tracked Bitcoin future contracts, and it was a decision made just a day earlier from the deadline. So one can only wonder what kind of scrutiny a company could put in when submitting an ETF application to the SEC with less than 24 hours to hammer something out. It makes sense that perhaps that wasn't the highest quality, and given that this is a stoic, attempting to be objective government organization, that may actually bode pretty well for everyone's uh, peace of mind. But with that said, there was also six other proposals that were rejected that went along with that. And this next quote offers some information as to exactly how this process is undertaken. Many individuals seem to get excited over the idea that the SEC is drawing out or asking for more time to review a specific proposal. However, quote, an SEC filing hitting a deadline is just a procedural reality. It doesn't change the odds of it getting approved. So that's coming straight out of the SEC, and that makes reasonable sense considering that there's an ever-increasing queue of applications as corporations and individuals alike push to be the first recognized Bitcoin ETF. All this excitement and sentiment is perhaps misplaced in my opinion. After all, these individuals believe that this is going to be a huge boon and bring a tidal wave, as the article says, of institutional buyers into the market, bumping up prices and kicking off the great bull run of our time. However, if we recall that the company backed, which is funded by the International Exchange, the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange and many other global trading platforms, has created, again, the company backed to allow institutions to come into the crypto space with fully backed and funded uh, Bitcoin claims, that's a pretty big deal. Realistically, yes, an ETF would make things easier, but not only is the company backed looking to allow for institutions to come into the market, but there's also the ETN from Sweden, which essentially serves the same function as an ETF. So one has to wonder to what degree this near obsession with the notion of an ETF is largely just a byproduct and function of our traditional and perhaps increasingly archaic overlay and view of what legitimizes a market. After all, this is a new and revolutionary asset class with very little precedent behind it, so perhaps ETF ETFs, while very legitimizing and beneficial for other asset classes, won't have the same ring in cryptocurrency. Only time will tell. One thing's for sure, the fiat currency crisis is kicking off worldwide, and that can very easily lead to a Bitcoin boom. Here's a sombering tweet from Girish Gupta saying, if you were to buy a million dollars worth of Venezuela's local currency in the year 2013, when Maduro first came to power, it's now worth $3.40. Said another way, if you have a pretty good paying job, or you and your partner, let's say $100,000 total, well, that would be worth 34 cents. So it's a sombering reality and it's government intrusion and dictatorship being superimposed on individuals who largely just want to live their own lives in a way that is free of government intervention and intrusion as much as possible. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case just in Venezuela. Places like Turkey, Iran, now Argentina, Brazil, the crushing force of hyperinflation is hitting a lot of emerging markets, and this very well could have reverberations all the way up into the dominant markets such as Europe, the United States, and China. Again, only time will tell. However, it's extremely fortunate that technology such as Bitcoin, blockchain, and other cryptocurrencies are emerging with very favorable properties such as fungibility, mutability, and the ability to move around very fluidly in an otherwise less than, uh, less than favorable scenario, to put it very lightly. With that said, that's all we have for the news of the day. Let's go ahead and jump into the happenings and conferences for August 24th, Friday. We have a Voice of Blockchain conference going on in the big city of Chicago. The Neo Hackathon is kicking off in Japan. And Ardor is having a meetup at Krems University in Austria. That's it for Friday, August 24th. For Saturday, August 25th, Ontology will be in Tokyo for their Tokyo launch. And I couldn't find anything for August 26th, Sunday. Seems to be a kind of quiet day. However, we do have the list of B-list coins, all fine tokens. There's just far too much to talk about with respect to time. We have that below in the description for you. So keep an eye on that. You never know when your favorite crypto may be doing something unexpected. And we try to keep tabs on everything happening in the industry for you guys. We also have an exciting giveaway coming up. That's right, I'm not gonna release too much information now, but I will let you know it involves one of my favorite projects. They've been super great so far, and I am super excited to help with distribution and get some crypto into the hands of the people, and frankly, maybe into your hands. So all you gotta do is watch the next Crypto Coffee update for details on how to enter for your chance to win. So get excited. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Your support really does mean everything. After all, it would just be me 
pasting a bunch of links onto a YouTube channel if nobody was watching, so you're the real MVP. Let me know of any information or conferences or projects you find interesting that perhaps you'd like to have a review of or something I might have missed. After all, we're all working to make the crypto space the best it could possibly be together. But for now, my name is Paul, signing off. Thanks again for watching. We are Cryptide, and remember, the tide is rising. I make these little comments at the end on porpoise. Ha. Huh.